हाई एवरी वन वेलकम टू माई चैनल Today in this video we are going to learn about how to choose a database. If you follow the fundamentals then you will be able to easily decide how to choose a database. First thing first. First of all databases could be divided into three categories. SQL databases, NoSQL databases and new SQL databases. SQL databases deals with structured form of data. When we say structured form of data something where the schema is fixed, data is in completely structured form, something in the form of tables, where we have rows, where we have columns, we can run SQL on top of that data. That is structured form of data. And structure, when we deal with SQL databases, they follow the acid properties. Then comes the NoSQL databases. NoSQL databases deals with semi-structured form of data. So that means some kind of structure is there, but the schema is not rigid, it's flexible, something like JSON, XML, or YML, if we have to deal with such kind of data then no sql databases comes into picture no sql databases follows the cap theorems and the third category is uh, new sql sql databases so we'll discuss new sql databases once we'll go deep into sql databases first sql databases so as we have discussed when we deal with structure form data we come across with sql databases but when we deal with structure form data then we again have two choices do we want oltp or do we want olap so OLTP is do you want a transaction processing or an OLAP is and we want to do something with analytics. So usually when we deal with OLTP, when we want low latency, high throughput and highly consistent system, we deal with OLTP kind of system. Something like online transactions, something like a day-to-day -day operation of a system in terms of order processing, in terms of user management, where we want a low latency system and a highly consistent behavior for that one we go for OLTP kind of processing and some of the examples are MySQL, Oracle and few examples from clouds are also there. So these kind of databases are based out of vertical scalable. They are not distributed databases. Now in these kind of system there is a problem. If you have to deal with large amount of data if the scale is too too much and you also want a SQL behavior then these systems are not capable of doing so. For that one, we have a new category which is called new SQL database. It brings the best of SQL and NoSQL. You want a SQL capability plus you want a scalar also. So that is new SQL. So new SQL database is something like CockroachDB or Google Spanner. They are based on horizontal scalable principle and they are distributed databases. Whatever we want to do in terms of acid, they are able to do so. And if we are dealing with scale, they are able to handle that scale as well. So other than OLTP, we could have other requirement as well, which is OLAP. OLAP is all about online analytic processing. So something like we have a lot of data, we have to come up with some kind of analysis. Uh, data could be coming from different sources. We could have a his historical data as well. So we have to process a lot of data and then we have, come up, we have to come up with the analysis. So that process could take some time and we could have multiple complex queries. We need to come up with different data models. In these categories, then we have to choose some data warehousing solution, something like Amazon Redshift, uh, Snowflake, which is very popular. You know, all this data warehousing solution, modern data warehousing solution, they are based on horizontal scalable principle and they offer the columnar storage, which is very efficient in terms of processing and in terms of storage. Moving to the next section, which is semi-structured form of data. So if we have semi-structured data, then we have no SQL databases. The very first database that we want to discuss is document database. Document oriented database, that means if you want to store something in the form of documents, document could be something like a JSON, where a simple JSON could be there or a complex JSON in the form of multiple objects. We want to maintain a hierarchical structure. So databases like MongoDB, Couchbase, or some offerings for cloud, they are very efficient in storing and processing such kind of information. Some of the use cases which are being very much used in the industry for, for cataloging purpose, for content management system, for real-time processing, because this system also are capable of writing very high speed and giving the high throughput. And these systems are very much popular, especially the MongoDB in web application as well for like mean stack, mern stack. So these systems are used in this category. The next part is key value pair databases. So key value pair databases where you know the key is there and then a value is there. These kind of databases are usually used for a read heavy system. And in this category also there we have two choices. It could be in memory or it could be in storage as well. Let's say we want to maintain some caching for that one. We would use in-memory key value pair, in-memory store, something like Redis, Hazelcache, Memcache. 
or if we don't have this low latency requirement then we may go for a dynamo db as well which is a key value store these systems are frequently used for caching purpose for session management purpose even at some extent for messaging queue and for maintaining a distributed locking system as well next we have column oriented databases or wide column store so in this category we have cassandra we have hbase we have scala db so these kind of databases are frequently being used where we have a requirement of high throughput read and write let's say you want to ingest a large amount of data and you want to have achieve this high read and throughput speed for that one these kind of databases are very much efficient apart from these these are these databases are also used for real time data processing where you want to write and you want to get you want to do some real time analysis for these one also these kind of databases are very much popular now moving to the next section which is time series databases as the name suggests something to do with the time let's say we are getting events where we have we have time in that events and we want to analyze those event based on some time stamp for that one these kind of databases are very much efficient to store and process that information this time series databases are very much uh, being used in terms of monitoring and alerting in real time lot of events uh, you know lot of events are getting, getting generated from iot from different devices these using this time series databases we are able to detect whether the system is working fine or some anomaly detection is also there and these kind of uh, uh, time series databases are also being used in financial industry for doing the forecasting in terms of monthly basis daily basis so these time series databases are very very crucial when we have something in the form of time stamp and then we want to analyze that information based on some time stamp value next we have graph databases as the name suggests if we want have a require if we have a requirement where we want to store the data in the form of graphs so we have come up with some data model we want to maintain some relation between the two entities and then we want to create a graph and then we want to store that information so that we could we could build some knowledge graph or we could get inside of that graph for that one we go for different graph databases in graph databases we have tiger db we have neo 4j and other offerings from the cloud as well so some of the use cases in graph are we have to come up with a norm reduction recommendation algorithm knowledge graph this graph databases are being used in the industry apart from these uh, databases we could also have a scenario where we want to have something like a search capability something like let's say you go to amazon.com and you search something and you are able to find that product that way for these kind of use cases so we have specialized kind of storage something like uh, elastic search or solar which has capability of storing that information in the form of inverted index and then they are able to easily process that information they are able to uh, give that result in a fraction of second or a millisecond and these kind of systems are also being used for real time data mining as well now so we have we have discussed structured form of data and semi structured form of data and then we have unstructured form of data as well so in struct unstructured form of data as we have discussed where we don't have any structure be it in text images videos so that kind of uh, structure for that one we use something like a distributed storage like a hdfs s3 blob or google file system so these are the uh, you know highly distributed storage system where we process and we store this unstructured form of information so based on the these factor you can choose a database and each of the cloud has offerings and there are cloud agnostic databases as well so based on the requirement you can choose the database as per your need thank you so much for listening to me i'll see you in the next video Thank you.